According to the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory's YVO monthly update on Thursday, November 13, Steamboat Geyser is likely to experience a major eruption in the coming weeks. Located in the Norris Geyser Basin, Steamboat Geyser is the world's tallest active geyser. According to YVO, small eruptions began at Steamboat Geyser in mid-December, suggesting that a major eruption is possible during the first few weeks of 2025. YVO confirmed that Steamboat Geyser experienced only six major eruptions in 2024, the lowest number since the geyser began periodically active in 2018. According to YVO scientist in charge, Michael Poland, the decrease in Steamboat Geyser's annual eruptions is likely related to changes in its hot water piping system. Poland said scientists have ruled out earthquake activity, changes in thermal input, and climate conditions after measuring these parameters. Steamboat appears to experience phases of higher and then lower activity, as do many other geysers in Yellowstone, Poland told Buckrail. This geyser experienced very active phases in the 1,960 seconds, early 1,980 seconds, and since 2018. So this appears to be typical of Steamboat, and the fact that the number of annual eruptions has decreased in recent years likely means it will return to a dormant state, perhaps with periods of years between eruptions. Yellowstone National Park warns that when Steamboat Geyser erupts, dissolved minerals in its plumes can damage glass and vehicle windows. Large eruptions can eject air more than 90 meters. Mature lodgepole pines have been snapped by heavy rain, eroded, and then swept away by large geyser eruptions, YMP writes on its website. The foot of a ladder has been blocked by geyser eruptions. According to YMP, the air phase of a large eruption lasts only three minutes, but can last more than 40 minutes. After the air supply is exhausted, the geyser resumes a vigorous steam phase that lasts from several hours to several days. The National Geographic Research Center confirms that steamboat geyser can roar so loudly that conversation near the geyser becomes difficult, and visitors to Norris Campground, numbering over one million, have reportedly been awakened by the noise. Steamboat Geyser, a giant geyser in the Norris Geyser Basin, has captivated scientists and park visitors since entering its active phase in March 2018. At its peak in 2019-2020, major eruptions occurred almost weekly. This prolonged activity has given researchers the opportunity to understand the factors that influence eruption timing, map the plumbing system with the help of closely spaced seismometers, look for eruption precursors in gas emissions, and listen for air and steam plumes with specialized microphones. Although Steamboat's eruption rate has slowed only a few eruptions this year, research on the geyser continues in earnest. What you might notice as you walk around the geyser basin is the asynchronous nature of the trees and thermal features. As thermal zones form and change, the hot soil and boiling, silica-rich air kill existing trees and prevent new growth. Most trees here can be thawed through silica precipitation on and within the wood, which prevents the normal freezing of plant material. Because this tree preservation technique can be used, preserved trees can be key to tracking historical changes in thermal activity. For example, several years ago, scientists successfully dated wood samples embedded in the center mound of Old Faithful Geyser and concluded that Old Faithful must have been inactive in the 13th and 14th centuries. A study just published in the journal Geochemistry, Geophysics, Geosystems closely examined steamboats' current and past impacts on surrounding lodgepole pines. Most trees within a 14, 24 meter, 46, 79 feet 
radius of the hole showed significant signs of stress, including dead branches and crown tops. Researchers compared aerial and ground level photographs taken since 1954 to determine that Steamboat's three other active phases, 1960, 1969, 1982, 1984, and 2018 present, significantly impacted surrounding trees. However, only the most recent active phase was associated with tree mortality within a 250 meter, 820 foot radius along the dominant wind direction. 